Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. This is episode number 460 for Tuesday, the 12th of July, 2016. So nice to have you here. I am Robbie Ferguson. Please help me welcome my co-host, Kelsey Jensen. Hello, everybody. And standing by over in the interwebs is Nelson Hudis. And Nelson, greetings to you. Nice to have you on tonight. Thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, cheers. Tonight, we are going to have a lot of fun. Nelson's here because he is one of the early adopters of the brand new, the first, the world's first legitimate Star Trek original series communicator. We're going to take a look at that in just a couple of moments' time. Also, we've got a couple of really sweet drones with first-person view screens in stock, ready to go, and they all cost around, well, under 100 bucks. That's pretty good. So we're going to unbox those for you tonight because we want to show you what you could be flying this summer. Kelsey, what do you got coming up in the news? I've got lots of stuff coming up in the news, and here's what's coming up in the Category 5.TV newsroom. Hackers are using a sideload version of Pokemon Go to distribute to distribute a tool which allows them to hijack your smartphone. Facebook is toying with the idea of secret messages. Dalek commands can hijack smartphones. And Bitcoin mining just became less rewarding on purpose. Stick around, the full details are coming up later in the show. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Welcome back. This is Category 5 Technology TV. So great to have you here. Welcome. Kelsey, nice to see you again. Nice to see you too. You having a good summer off? Sure. <laughs> well, off from school. All right, yeah. so you're working hard, working hard. I'm working very hard. Yeah. It's fun times. I think you should tell the viewers. I mean, we'll get to it because we've got a lot to cover tonight, but um, try to fit it in near the end of the show. Let's talk about what you've been up to. All right. Because I think some of you would be interested in knowing what she's been building it's nothing too exciting. It is really exciting. I've got a couple of really cool drones to look at tonight, but before we get into it, we've got Nelson Hudis standing by. You remember him. He's a friend of the show. Nelson, it is so nice to see you again. Welcome to Category 5. Oh, thank you very much, Robbie, for having me on the show again. Now, he knows his way around the studio, but tonight he is coming to us live over a, uh, a web connection. And we've been having all kinds of weird issues tonight, so yeah. we're going to absolutely try to stick it out through the, uh, through the course of the show. If you're watching live, I apologize. You may be experiencing some buffering issues, but uh, we're going to do our best to have that recording for you and, uh, and make it sweet. Nelson, you picked up an amazing device and it's available now. It's on ThinkGeek. Uh, you can go there through our affiliate link, cat5.tv slash trek. But, uh, Nelson, this thing, you got to show it to us. Uh, he's already unboxed it. We're going to talk a little bit about it in just a couple of minutes' time. It's a little grainy on the Skype video, but uh, fortunately, Nelson has already unboxed this thing, and uh, he's taken a nice little video for us, so thanks for that, Nelson. We're gonna jump over you're, to that. You're very welcome. I'm gonna take a real quick look at your unbox of the uh, Star Trek, the original series, Bluetooth Communicator. And after that, we're gonna talk to Nelson about this thing and all the different features that, uh, that he's experienced over uh, the past couple of days using it. So we'll be right back. This is the Star Trek Bluetooth communicator made officially for the 50th anniversary of the show. And it comes in this beautiful presentation made by the Wand Company. I am now going to unbox it. And it comes in this authentic, we'll turn it around, USS Enterprise NCC 1701 standard issue communicator. And it opens up like that, and the presentation is, is beautiful, as I said before. It comes with a stand, which you have to put together, but it's quite easy. We'll do that later, and it comes with the communicator, and it's very authentic, as you can see. You flip it open, it looks like the original from the show, and we're going to make it, we're going to turn it on, and we'll sh show you how it works. So now it's on, and close the grill, and flip it open just like in the show, and you can hear the chirp. And um, they really went to a lot of trouble and a lot of work to please the Star Trek fans of the original show and make something really authentic looking. Communicator also makes authentic sounds of the show. Please repeat, Captain, I didn't receive that. Mr. Spock? Scotty? I'll do what I can, sir. Aye, sir. Sulu? McCoy here. And McCoy. 
Received and understood. And of course, Uhura. Enterprise Bridge, Lieutenant Uhura. Yes, sir. This is the bottom of the stand, which has now been assembled, which now looks like that once all put together. And it beautifully sits on my desk. And then the communicator fits on a magnet. And it looks very authentic, as I said before. And you can flip it open, and it can proudly be displayed on your desk. So that's where I've put my... This ends our unboxing video. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Welcome back to the show. Nelson Huda standing by with a Star Trek, the original series, Bluetooth communicator device. Are you really excited about this? I really am. As soon as this thing came out, I was one of those geeks that said, Oh, I need it. Hold it back up, man. He was holding it up, and then he put it down just as I switched over cameras. I love this thing. Okay, Nelson. You're, you're as excited about this as me, but you actually get to hold this thing in your hands. Yes, I sure do. Yeah, thanks for um, rubbing it in. All right, tell us about it. So I saw it online last November, uh, and I thought um, I've been a Star Trek fan since the 1960s, ever since it went on the air, and I said, you know what? I just have to have one of these. So I ordered it, and they originally said it was going to ship in January, but uh, it got pushed back to April, and then it got pushed back from April to June. But that's because... The guys that were licensed to uh, create this thing for the fans wanted to make sure that it was absolutely 150% perfect for the fans because they did not want the fans to ridicule them of putting out a product that was half, you know, half, you know, not very good at all. Sure. They wanted it to be perfect, and um, I, I know that they announced it a year ago, last July. So it's been a, a year in the making. They've actually uh, been working on it for two years, but they announced it a year ago. I found it in November, ordered it, and it came a week ago yesterday. And uh, huh. I am just uh, happy as heck. Uh, on cloud nine, love it. I'll say. Now, Nelson, you say that it took them a year or two to, to actually achieve this. I beg to differ, sir. I think that uh, there are those of us, not necessarily myself, but yourself, you've been watching for for since the 60s what absolutely come on so so to you come on this is 50 years in the making easy that's exactly right and a lot of the comments they're getting um on a couple of the different websites that sell it are saying people think that like that they're like a kid again uh because the you know it's been they've wanted one for over 50 years and now they can truly have one. Oh my goodness yes Oh, I'm so there with you. Um, Air Hogs, for example, has just released July 1st, brought out a drone that is NCC-1701. Right. And so that is coming my way, and I've got that same excitement, right? We're, so we're you so are just like me. You are I because I am over the moon. I'm like a kid in a candy store holding this, using this. Uh, all uh, A lot of my friends who are Star Trek fans are absolutely jealous of me having sure. it. Sure. Um, it's put out by uh, a UK company called The Wand Company, who actually got licensed by Paramount and CBS to do this oh, for the for 50th them. anniversary of the show. So it is a licensed product. Fantastic. Uh, I want to look at some of the features of it. I think what it really boils down to is we're kind of like we're finally achieving every, every Star Trek fan for, for as long as we've been fans has said this show is, is not just basing ideas on technology but is actually inspiring technology mm -hmm. so as we start to see things like this even though it's a little gimmicky and it's a little you know it's it is to to be a you know a reminder of the show and it's a prop really but but really, it, it, but it shows how far technology has come that the show has now inspired a device that actually works. Yeah, That's right. All the other replicas out there on the market, as far as I know, and I've done a lot of reading about it, is that they are actual, they're, they're not really true working models. They're toys that light up and they make the chirp sound, but they don't actually connect to anything. This is the first one ever to do that. Show us. So... You can flip it open, and it makes the chirp sound. And uh, actually, you get some actually neat neat sound effects. Scotty and hold, and, hold uh, it up to your mic for me, Nelson. I can I can barely hear it. Okay. 
Si sound effects from the show. Very cool sound effects. Enterprise. Spot now, here. are these... <laughs> so these are toy-like functions. Like, this is stuff that, you know, the, the, the play school models have. What, yes, what does are. this yeah, one yeah, do? That, 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 that part of it is just for fun. But yes. uh, um, you can truly make a call. Okay, let's so do it. So let's try uh, and give you a call in the studio. Okay. So are you so, di you're actually dialing on your phone? We can't see your phone right now because you, you've got it down on the desk. But are you dialing normally or does it, does it have, I guess I'm it would have. On, I'm di it does not have a dial interface. I'm dialing on my cell phone. But you would be able to, can you control things like Siri with the uh, voice dial, for example? Have you tried yes. that yet? Let me, let, me, let me finish dialing you. Hang on. Okay. Wait for it. Wait for it. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment of truth. He is dialing the Category 5 TV studio on a Star Trek communicator. Never okay. thought I'd see the day. Calling the Category 5 technology. I just got your voicemail. Fantastic. Okay. Now, once you start, once you start I'm going to actually kill your, uh, your microphone on your head so that we can just hear the communicator alone, okay? Category 5 dot TV. Thanks for the call. voicemail. Hello, Robbie and everybody at Category 5 Technology TV. I am calling you from the official Star Trek communicator. And uh, we'll uh, count down from 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, test call. End of call. <laughs> nice, buddy. Okay, we got it. Good old voicemail. Sends me a wave file. Gotta love it. So are you going to play it back? Uh, yeah, it's already dubbed. So, um, so what, what the viewers heard is, uh, is actually the, the voicemail. So, Nelson, can you tell us a little bit about the features here? Of course, okay, we've looked at the gimmicky stuff. Tell us about uh, how the device itself works. So you can actually make calls and receive calls. Uh, you actually get the... Um, that's, that's when an incoming call comes in, and you just can flip open the grill and answer it. You can... Uh, just like that? You, just like in the oh, show. I so badly want to be standing in a coffee shop line when that call comes in. <laughs> as long as your cell phone is uh, in your pocket or on your belt, and this thing is hooked up through Bluetooth, yeah. uh, this will this will buzz you just the way it did. Bu it buzzed Captain Kirk or Mr. Spock in the show. Exactly and you like it. Flip open the grill and answer your call, and uh, and uh, you know you can actually and you can if you've got a. You can use Siri within it as well. If you've got a, <laughs> you've got a, uh, a uh, an iPhone, you can do voice commands through whatever phone you have, uh, and it'll 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 activate your voice commands on your cell phone, and, and it'll follow whatever voice command you give it. You can stream music to it as well. Really? From, uh, oh, like cool. if you've got a uh, if you if you've got a tablet and you've got a radio station you want to listen to, you you I w you can stream music to it. I was out on my porch last week and streaming music to it. Oh, and the coolest thing I did last weekend was sitting out on the porch with my tablet, watching a Star Trek episode and putting the sound through the communicator. <laughs> It's like Star Trek Inception. That's wonderful. I love it. And the, yeah. that is the coolest thing of your weekend. It is, a, it is the it coolest speaks thing. speaks volumes. And, um, and I love like it. Like I said, just, ha just had to have it. Um, Absolutely. You know, and uh, I'm very glad I got it and <laughs> uh, having a lot of fun with it. And um going to continue to do so. Thanks for showing it to us, man. I really appreciate it. And this is just one of those... I'm sorry. I, it's so geeky. <laughs> and I love it. And I've got to have one. That's what I want. My birthday's coming up, folks. Go tell over to cat5.tv slash Tell your, tell your, tell your wife what you want and tell her to order one for you. That's it, baby. You'll end up with five. Baby, please send me this. <laughs> Okay, so cat5.tv slash Trek. Nelson Hudis joining us tonight to talk about the Star Trek TOS Bluetooth communicator. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, Nelson. Yes, that was You're awesome. very, very welcome. And enjoy. Give me a call anytime. Absolutely. Will do. Thanks for having me on the show. Take care. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thanks to our guest, uh, Nelson Hudis, who... Uh, it's always a pleasure to have him on the show. Yes. 
And uh, I love geeky technology. And tonight we're actually uh, not not quite as geeky as a Star Trek communicator that uses Bluetooth, but also kind of geeky, at least something that appeals to this geek. I've got a couple of drones that we're going to be unboxing in just a couple of minutes' time, so you want to stick around. In the meantime, we're going to take uh, a couple of quick moments, and we're going to talk about the news. Yes. The news. News. The news. What do you got for us, Kels? I got lots of stuff. All right. Today is Tuesday, July 12th, 2016, and here are the top stories we're covering this week. Hackers are using a sideload version of Pokemon Go to distribute a tool which allows them to hijack your smartphone. Facebook is toying with the idea of secret messages that self-destruct Maxwell Smart style. I got that reference, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> She's not as much a kid as you thought. <laughs> Actually, mostly from that Get Smart movie. You Googled it, didn't you? <laughs> uh, Dalek commands can hijack smartphones, and Bitcoin mining just became less rewarding on purpose. These stories are coming right up. Don't go anywhere. Jeff Weston, yeah, man. you're building a brand new beautiful website. What? Aren't you? No. Am I? Oh, you're a terrible actor. What? This is where acting comes into play. Oh, I didn't know we were acting. You're supposed to act. Okay, fair enough. All right. yeah, I'm building a really cool website. Are you building a really cool website? You need hosting. One of the things about a hosting account is you don't want to have limitations put on your website. It's true. How much hard drive space do you have? How many email accounts? How many domains can point to it? Well, we've got an amazing deal for you. For a very limited time, cat5.tv slash dreamhost. For just $5 and a bit of change per month, you are going to get unlimited website hosting, unlimited email accounts on that hosting uh, service. You are also going to receive a free domain name. Ooh. So your own .com. Nice. To put that amazing website that you've been working on it's on true. there. If you run, if you want to build a WordPress site, fine. Sign up. Cat5.tv slash dreamhost. Just don't put Panama Papers on it. Just don't do it. But hey, uh, it's a great deal, folks. Best deal you're going to find. $5 and change per month. Go to cat5.tv slash dreamhost. I'm Kelsey Jensen, and here are the top stories from the Category 5.tv newsroom. Nintendo's new Pokemon Go augmented reality game has quickly proven to be a cultural phenomenon, juicing the company's stock. But it is only available in certain countries right now, leading some players to install the game from third-party sources, including yours truly. We've warned about using third-party app stores in the past, and now a malicious version of Pokemon Go is poised to infect Android phones with, with code that provides hackers a backdoor to their phones. We spoke to Dave Jevons back on episode 453 about mobile security and how our sm smartphones spy on us. And now, his company, Proofpoint, has found a version of the Pokemon Go program that included a remote access tool, or RAT, called Droid Jack, which they say can give full an, an attacker full control over a victim's phone. The malicious version of the game was uploaded to a file sharing service on July 7th, just a few days after the game's original official release. Though they say they have not observed the, the malware in, in action in the wild, Proofpoint provides a few methods for concerned players to determine if they've inadvertently downloaded a compromised version of the game. One of the major features distinguishing an Android phones from the iPhones is their ability to sideload files, down, files downloaded from sources outside of Google Play Store. This allows users more flexibility, but is also, as Proofpoint part puts it, an extremely risky practice and part of the reason Android systems are more vulnerable to viruses and hacking than iPhones. Okay, now, is it just me? Or, and I'm covered, I'm completely <laughs> hidden. I kind of felt like you were confident going into this story, and then as you're reading it, you started to... Yeah. What happened, Kelsey? What did you do? I did download the side version of Pokemon Go. Are you running Android? Yes. I know. I'm what have I taught you? <laughs> Apparently nothing. I'm going to go home tonight, figure out how to figure out if I've downloaded a bad version, and, and if I have, I'm going to fix it immediately. It's not available in Canada, Kelsey. I know, but I, I couldn't resist. Not available in Canada. 
So if you get a copy in Canada, it's not a real copy. And you just read it. They're already using it. Yeah. It's already proven itself to be a pretty dangerous app as far as security goes. Yes. And, and I knew that. That's the going legitimate copy. That's the legit copy. And I knew that. And all you really have to do for that is just revoke its permissions. And then it can't then it can't see anything. It oh really? Well on a side loaded app. Well not on the side loaded uh, app. Which bypasses the security. On the legit app. Oh, the legit one we're talking about yes. now. We we live in Canada. <laughs> yes, I need to figure out how to fix that. You see if I downloaded a bad version. Can't. You wait patiently, eagerly, like those who are waiting to see this episode uploaded tomorrow in full HD. You just wait for it, Kelsey. Now I'm singing Hamilton in my head. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I Enough. will try to fix it. I don't want to. I don't want to be too paternal, but Kelsey, you're grounded. I'm taking your phone away. <laughs> <laughs> oh Oops. boy. That's done now. To be fair, there are Pokemons watching us here in the studio tonight. Well, I captured that one now. But. And here's a shot. <laughs> <laughs> so it's pretty awesome. Yeah. In, in a way. A, that's a pretty good app. All right. Take All it right. away. Private messages that can disappear are being trialed by Facebook as it experiments with a new option for those using its Messenger app. They become hidden after a certain period of time chosen by the author, the firm said. It is part of a new secret messaging service having a limited trial, Facebook announced. Senders must choose one device to use it on as messages sent on this, this way are stored on the device itself. Those flagged to disappear will be deleted from the device as well. Starting a secret conversation with someone is optional, it said. Secret conversations can only be read on one device, and we recognize that experience may not be right for everyone. Okay. That's their official statement. Hate the grammar police, but if it can only be read on one device, it's a pretty lame conversation, Facebook. Talking to myself? What is this? Sorry. Just a grammar police moment. Carry on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Just saying. Facebook listed health and financial issues as examples of messages that people may wish to keep more private. The idea is being trialed on a limited basis, Facebook said, but added that it would be more widely available over the summer. Facebook officials explained in a technical document, Facebook will never have access to plain text messages unless one participant in, the, in a secret conversation voluntarily reports the conversation. That's either naive or just marketing hogwash from Facebook's perspective. Why? So they're offering secret messaging yeah. and they think it's going to be used for medical. Hey, Kelsey, oh. I've, got, I've got some kind of, I got hemorrhoids. Yeah. Good thing this is a private message. <laughs> think more about uh, like Dangerous I, yeah. Terrorist Terrorism is a, is a pretty big concern. Um, unfaithful uh, husbands, wives would be another one. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's my that's my whole. You, you don't. Yeah. You're not giving me much. To, that's that's just it. We've got though a different story to move on to happier things. Daleks! We have a Dalek here in the studio. I'm surprised. You've seen him back there. I'm surprised he hasn't tried to kill us yet. He tries each and every Tuesday night, Kelsey. <laughs> but we, we just... are too powerful. Yeah. Another Maxwell Smart reference. We've got a dome of silence over our heads and it's extermination proof. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> that was pretty good. Uh, we've been looking for a story that featured the Dalek. Yes. Because he's, he's lonely over there. And he says, he why can't I be on the show? Why, why can't I do more? So if here's, you don't let me do more, I will exterminate you. <laughs> here's your opportunity, Dalek. <laughs> Tell us, Kelsey, okay. what's this about? So they, these researchers... Have demonstrated how garbled speech commands hidden in radio or voice or video broadcasts could be used to control a smartphone. 
The clips, which sound like Daleks from Doctor Who, can be difficult for humans to understand, but still trigger a phone's voice control functionality. The commands could make a smartphone share its location data, make calls, and access com compromised websites. One security expert said users could switch off automatic voice recognition. The researchers from the University of California, Berkeley, and Georgetown University explored whether audio commands unintelligible to human listeners was, were still interpreted by smartphones as voice commands. They took a series of voice commands, such as, OK Google, call 911, which would activate an Android phone's voice control if enabled, and heavily distorted the audio so that it was uh, difficult for human listeners to understand. The low-pitched speech could be hidden among background noise and still trigger for smartphone features. Let's take a listen. Go to Google. Okay, to be fair, the last one may have been edited ever so slightly. <laughs> Maybe just a little bit. Maybe I added a little here or there. Enhanced the audio. <laughs> nice one. Thanks. The researchers say their study set out to answer the scientific question, can one leverage the differences in how computers and humans understand speech to produce commands that could be understood by the former and not the latter? They answered in a statement. We found that the answer to this question is yes, but there's certainly a lot more work to be done to investigate what it would take to make these attacks more practically deployable. The researchers will present their paper at the Usnik's Usnik's Yes. Usnik's. All right. Security Symposium in August. Hmm. It's kind of dangerous, but okay. <laughs> I'll let it slide cuz it sounds like Daleks apparently. Yeah, Daleks are awesome. Obviously. In a creepy way. <laughs> yes. Digital currency output just dropped by half thanks to anti-inflation code. If you have computers chugging away as Bitcoin mining machines, don't be surprised if your output just fell through the floor. Code built into the digital currency system has cut the mining reward in half as of this past Saturday. Where there were previously 25 bitcoins, roughly $16,000, to be mined every 10 minutes, you now have to fight over 12.5. The measure automatically kicks in every four, or four years or so as part of an attempt to curb inflation that would come from both a growing number of miners and ever faster computers. To no one's surprise, reducing the reward could have serious consequences for dedicated miners. As you have to work twice as hard to get the same money, companies with not-so-efficient operations may have no choice but to restructure or even close shop entirely. KNC Miner, for instance, declared bankruptcy in May after warning about the impending profit losses. Those miners most likely to survive are the ones that keep costs to a minimum through low-power computers and minimal staff. Although Bitcoin isn't quite as celebrated as it was a while back, it's still far more mainstream than it was in 2012. There are many more people mining than there were, than there were four years ago, and not all of them realize that they'll have, to cut, they'll have to factor in those reward cuts. The bigger question is whether or not the, the Bitcoin business will be better prepared when 2020 rolls around. Miners will either have to trim costs yet again or hope that they can make money from transaction fees. Big thanks this week to Jeff Weston, Roy W. Nash, and our community of viewers for submitting stories to us. If you found a news story you'd like to send, email it to newsroom at category5.tv. For all your tech news with a slight Linux bias, visit the category5.tv newsroom at newsroom.category5.tv. For the category5.tv newsroom, I'm Kelsey Jensen. Thanks, Kelsey. This is Category 5 Technology TV, and we, when we come back from a really short break, we are going to be unboxing two fantastic drones that you can get now and fly in time for summer, so stick around. Now here's another great way you can support the shows you love from the Category5.tv network by shopping at GearBest. That's right, Jeff. Uh, Cat5.tv slash GearBest. It's an online store for the geek streak in you. Or the loved ones. Well... Of course. I mean, especially your loved ones, right? Uh, because cat5.tv slash gearbest, quite frankly, has all of the greatest tech gifts that you could ever hope for at rock-bottom prices. 
Do they have cell phones? You betcha. Cat5.tv slash GearBest has a wide assortment of unlocked Android cell phones and tablets. What about compute, uh, consumer electronics? Those make a great gift. Absolutely. From high-tech watches to action cameras, headphones, even virtual reality headsets. Cat5.tv slash GearBest has you covered. They literally have it all, Jeff. Literally. Really? It's like a superstore right from the comfort of your own chair at your computer through the interweb. Yeah. I, there's no way they have it all. It's true. It's just a bunch of ele- uh, random electronics. Test me. Um, what about clothes? Yep. Both men and women, fashionable apparel at rock bottom, super duper prices. Kind of like this. Well, look at this coat. What do you think? It's a slimming mock leather jacket. I love it. It's available for less than $30 plus free shipping at cat5.tv slash gear best. All right. You kind of got me there. Wow. Any other questions for me, Jeff? Uh, now that the winter has passed, flying season. Do they have any good deals on, say, drone copters? Oh, my goodness. Well, check this out. Dude, they have everything. Check out over 500 various drones. And not only that, they're available marked down by about 30 to up to 63% off the regular price. Love it. What's the website again? Well, you're going to find GearBest on our partners pages for any of your favorite Category 5 TV shows like New Every Day, Category 5 Technology TV, The Pixel Shadow. Uh, But of course, if you want to shop absolutely right now and you want to go straight to the site, all you have to do is visit cat5.tv slash GearBest. See, that's easy. Cat5.tv slash GearBest. That's right. Happy shopping. Welcome back. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Are you ready for a little drone action? I'm so excited. Okay. So for the Category 5 Technology TV viewers, uh, I'm going to show you both of these real quick. Uh, huh? Huh, we've got two buttes on our site, cat5.tv slash fly. Whew. And we're going to be opening, box opening, both of those. I will move stuff out of the way. For the Drone Zone viewers, we're going to do one at a time. So, folks... Tonight we are unboxing the JJRC H11D. Woo! Say that a thousand times fast. No thanks. Brother. Hey, uh, okay, so tonight this drone has FPV. Built in, included, RTF. I'm very excited about this. Ready to fly, folks. It's ready to fly. Uh, it's got everything right in the box. And we're going to tear it out of the box like a boss. Uh, But specs-wise, okay, we've got a 2.4 gigahertz drone, which is standard. Yeah. So the controller, the actual flight, happens at 2.4 gigahertz. Problem that you run into with first-person view or FPV is that sometimes the screen, the camera, also operates on 2.4 gigahertz. Well, this one says, you know what? We're going to one-up that, and we are going to instead make the camera and the FPV 5.8 gigahertz so they don't conflict with each other. All right, let's get a look here. pretty good. There you go. There's the box. There's nothing on the other side. Literally. Nothing. All right, let's get a look. Ooh, I thought the controller was going to be blue. I love it red. Look (laughs) at that. Okay, so what do we got, Kels? You want to help me out here? Yeah, sure. Uh, There's a box here that I see. What, What is in that? What could possibly be in that? I'm gonna open it. Tear into it. Ooh. Uh, it's the. It was your viewfinder camera. See how you configure her out. <gasps> Whoa! Whoa. Right With the shade built in. No, this is the. Uh, this is the this, screen. This is your viewfinder. Yeah, essentially. Whoa. Careful. But. Uh, there's the screen with the sunshade, and it folds right up. It has selection switches to be able to change the frequency right on the screen, and when you open it up, it. Pops right out. There you go. So that's going to go right on our controller. We're going to look and at I've that in just a second. Camera. We've got the camera here as well. This, this camera has uh, tilt action, so you can actually make the camera go up and down live on the fly uh, from your controller. What else you got? A USB cable and USB. a battery? I think so. So I think it comes that's with. That. This has one 420 
420 milliamp hour battery. Very, very tiny battery. We're going to find out on the drone zone uh, how, much uh, how much actual flight time we get from this. You probably want to pick up a couple more of those so that you can fly a little bit longer. Uh, but we'll see. And then there's a charger as well. Okay, let's look at the actual drone here. So there we go. It's a quadcopter. We've got four motors. They are not brushless. Um, kind of a unique design. The motors are on their side. And then we've got uh, some kind of gearing mechanism to actually spin the propellers. Uh, so that's a little different. So when you remove the motors, you just remove one screw and then you can change the motors if you need to. That looks pretty sleek. We've got some prop guards, two prop guards. There must be two more somewhere. We're going to look into that, see if we can find them. Uh, here are four spare propellers and a propeller uh, or a screwdriver. screwdriver. Doesn't look like the propellers themselves have screws. Uh, oh, they do, they do, on the side. They're oh. kind of hidden. That's kind of cool. There it is. A little, a little bit. <laughs> cool screws, man. <laughs> awesome screws. <laughs> Kelsey, quit screwing around. Hey. Ba -dum -ba. Uh, another USB <laughs> cable. Uh, how does this differ from this one? This looks like um, it's to charge. No, the drone? this is not. Is it this one? It's not a charger cable. No, that's the camera input. And show the camera, not me. Uh, that's camera input. Could so, it, but could that charging cord be to charge the drone? No, because the drone has a battery right here. Right. And this is the charger for the battery. Okay. There we go. I think this is just to connect into the... You know what? Okay, this has two outputs. Does this have an input? <gasps> it does. <gasps> Look. You can, you can actually power the screen from USB. Huh. So that way... Uh, I suppose you can, I'm not sure what, this looks like a like another drone battery output. We'll have to look into that. But uh, So you can power the screen from USB rather than battery. And the battery is, uh, oh my goodness. <gasps> Kelsey. Figured out. Did you notice? Oh. This takes the four, oh. maybe. No. It looks like. I'm gonna find out, but we're gonna we're gonna keep unboxing. I wonder if the screen actually uses the 420 milliamp. I wonder, but then what do? Because it's awfully low for the drone itself. Let's get a look. All right, here's the controller. Ooh. Oh, this is the battery here for oh! the drone. Kelsey. Yeah. I found the battery. It's got a battery in it. I'm looking, and there's no battery. Okay, now we're talking. Oh, you can see why initially I was going, hmm, I don't know about that. There's a proper battery. What do we got? This is what? 1,100 milliamps on an itty bitty drone quadcopter. And I think that would be where then you would charge it and you plug it in there. Well, this actually plugs, plugs in the cable. Yeah. So it's and then I guess you go. take it out and charge it like that. There we go. Figured it out. Figured it out. Can I try? Yeah, you can try. But I, what if I already got it? Oh, it's got battery. It does. Look at that. Okay. So we got that much. That's awesome. Okay, so we've got an 1100 milliamp battery in the drone. It actually came in the drone, not part of the pack. And the 420 milliamp is going to be for the screen. So Which that's is a little better. Bit better. No, of course, yeah. So I'm not sure what kind of battery life we're going to get out of that. We're going to find out, um, but it's as simple Ooh, as that. So the camera just... mounts on there, and then we've got wireless screens. So let's look at the controller real quick. You know, it would be so much easier is. if I could. You know, it's well, not closed. Properly. We don't need to First. assemble it right now. That doesn't matter. So we've got three AA batteries. Let's jump over here. There you go, three AA batteries into the controller. It has the ability to use a screw, but it's not required. Uh, we've got all kinds of buttons, including pan, uh, or not pan, but tilt the camera right here. So you want to, you, if you want to be able to adjust the camera, we're going to be able to do that on the fly. Okay, here's what's kind of cool about this. Not only does the controller look great, but it's got a mounting mm. spot for our screen. Let's get rid of, let's put this back the way it should be. There we go. Okay, so popping that out. There's our screen. So our controller winds up looking 
a little something something like that it's pretty nifty that is pretty sweet all right so we need in order to get up in the air we need three double a batteries for the controller everything else is included and we're ready to fly that is the JJRC. Uh, the model is H11D, and you can get it at cat5.tv slash fly. Let's set this bad boy aside. All right, and we're going to pop over to Cheerson now. To the other one. Oh, we still got parts everywhere. What's that? We still have parts everywhere. Oh, I found two more I think those were prop guards. Oh, there, there we are. go. All right. I'll just stick all the rest of the stuff in this box. Perfect. Throw it in the box, because we took it out of a box. Now we can't put it back in the box. It won't fit. Never does. Never does. Can't wait garbage. to put that one up in the air. Okay. It's recycle, Kelsey. Come on. Next up, we're going to be looking at a Cheerson CX-33S. Now, the CX-33 line comes with, uh, there are three different types of drones. There's the 33, which is just a straight, uh, what's called a Y6 um, drone. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not a quadcopter because it's only got three arms. It's not a tricopter because it has six motors. It's not a, a hexacopter because it, again, only has three arms. So it's called a Y6. It's shaped like a Y and it has six motors, six props. Um, this is another one that has FPV included and uh, that's all part of it. And it it looks is pretty cool. Oh, it looks pretty cool. We're going to get into the box, but it is uh, 5.8 gigahertz video. Oh, it's, already open on that side. <laughs> it's my side. <laughs> it's 5.8 gigahertz video. It's 2.4 gigahertz controls. Here we go. All right. First thing that fell out is a little goodie bag. And this goodie bag has a USB charger cable, it has a screwdriver. Phillips screwdriver uh, and to change extra, props, and, and it has two propellers. Now this <clears throat> this drone, I'll call it because uh, you know to keep saying Y6, it's kind of silly. Um, has six motors, six props, so two are not a lot to spare. But uh, there we go. Uh, but you're probably not going to crash this one. You're going to be careful with it, right? Be careful. Let's set that aside. Okay, there's the the drone. What else have we got? Okay, under here. You know, some would say, oh, the packaging is just this little, little. Truth be told, I'm kind of glad I'm not paying for fancy boxing. Nope. I'd rather get a good drone for a good price. Uh, so there we go. We've got prop guards. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm not used to seeing six prop guards. <laughs> there you go. Okay. And, also with the screws and the controller. Hold. You want to pull out that controller I and get do. a look at that? I really do. I'm trying to make. I'm trying to make sure I don't break this because with my track record, <laughs> maybe I should do this, Kels. Here, wait, I think I got it. I think I. She's got it. I got. She's it. got it, folks. What do you got? Okay, so pull the oh. pull these guys off of there. Then we'll call these the nipples. Look at that. Man. It's got the built-in screen. So this That's one is actually cool. built right into the drone uh, or to the, the controller. It's got the mounting apparatus is already kind of it's there. Uh, tightens up so you can adjust it, tighten it. And there's a channel button on the controller's face that presumably allows us to change the channel in case we get interference. Again, the screen and the camera are 5.8 gigahertz versus the controller is 2.4 gigahertz. So unlike, say, the Micro Drone 3.0, for example, we're not operating both on 2.4 gigahertz. So right. the screen is not going to conflict with the range of your uh, controller, mm -hmm. your transmitter. Now, there is a screw here, so I don't have a... S oh, I do have a screwdriver. Let's find out how many batteries we, uh, we need for the controller because I don't see any controller batteries, and I'm assuming that, uh, like some of the other drones that we've reviewed, uh, the, con the uh, battery for the drone itself is already in the drone. The screw is a loose screw, so you want to be careful that you don't lose that. And we're going to need four AA batteries. Yes. Which, you know, you can get at your local Costco or whatever. There you go. Okay, what is cool about this quad? You'll notice that the, uh, the left controller here, which is your, uh, your altitude, is automatically centering to the middle. Well, it actually has, this one's kind of unique because it has uh, barometric pressure uh, sensors. So when you fly up into the air, 
and it also has automatic takeoff with one button, so it will take off by itself, and it will hover there because it uses barometric pressure to realize if it's moving up or down. So you can actually get to the altitude that you want and just hover, and it will do a very fine That's job of hovering for you. fairly fancy. It's fairly fancy. So beyond that, it's also got the built-in camera. Video quality is not going to be a, like, a, you're not going to be shooting professional video with this, but it is basically meant for the screen so that you can fly it around and do first-person view. It's very... Uh, it's very agile, it's very responsive because the tri, the tri design, the Y6 design is known to be uh, very responsive. We're gonna take it up for a flight on the drone zone, but let's get a quick look at the actual uh, drone here. So it's all already assembled for us. Already, it's again, ready to fly. So you see we've got one motor, two motors, three motors, four motors, five motors, and six motors. Sorry if I'm off camera. Okay, so there we go. And we've got the camera here, which is built for, uh, FPV. It's not for shooting video. It does, though, have micro SD input. However, the quality is not going to be, um, it's not going to be fantastic quality because it's meant for FPV, not for shooting high quality video. Uh, it is also able to be tilted up and down. So this is motorized and you can actually tilt the camera down. So the advantage to that is as you're flying uh, at high speeds, the, the uh, drone is going to tilt like this. So then you can actually tilt the camera up so that you're not looking down at the ground, you're looking at the horizon, and you can do that on the fly. It's it so is. pretty. It's kind of cool. Kind of cool. There's no GPS. Again, it uses barometric pressure uh, in order to uh, maintain altitude, and this is available at cat5.tv slash fly, and you can pick up one of those if you're interested in stepping things up in your drone game. There it is, the CX-33S. I started talking about it um, just before we started unboxing. Um, okay, so the 33 is just a straight, it's this. It's just the drone and the controller. No screen, no camera, okay? okay. The 33, next step up is the 33, where'd the box, box go? Here. Oh, sorry. On the bottom there, it shows me the three. I can't remember the second one. The second one was the W. Wi-Fi. So the 33W is uh, going to allow you to use your phone or your iPod Touch or Android device as a screen. Okay. But again, it connects over Wi-Fi. Right. So it's 2.4 gigahertz, so it is going to cause some interference with the controller. The next step up is, of course, the S, the CX33S, as you see here, which includes the built-in screen, and it is a 5.8 gigahertz screen. So again, can't wait to fly it. You're going to see all these drones and more on the Drone Zone. You can find out more at thedronezone.tv. And of course, category5.tv is a member of the Tech Broadcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Cat5.tv slash TPN and the International Association of Internet Broadcasters, cat5.tv slash IAIB. Like how I snuck that in there? Love it. Thanks, Kels. No problem. Don't want to lose my screws, because that would suck. You don't really want to screw loose. I know. But Well, hey, folks, it's been fun having you here. This is Category 5 Technology TV. You don't want to miss out on all the fun that we've got planned for you this mm -hmm. summer. We've got a lot going on. We are shooting video this Saturday. We've yep. got uh, Drone Zone coming soon. And uh, we've got, uh, I think we've got six or seven drones that were submitted for review on the drone zone Pretty so cool. today we're doing an unboxing of a couple of them but uh and these are a couple that really stood out to me as being cool i think especially the fact that it's got built-in screens yeah. on the controller and they're all they're under 100 bucks it's pretty good yeah so uh and they're shipping now they're in stock the ones that i'm looking at tonight are in stock and they will ship probably next day so go to cat5.tv slash fly if you want to see them okay uh, but that's all the time that we've got for the show. I appreciate everybody being here tonight, and I hope that you had fun. And uh, Kelsey, always nice to have you here. Yes, it's always nice to come. Before we wrap fun. up, I said at the top of the show, we mm -hmm. wanted to know a little bit more about what you're doing. You're, you're getting into production. Yes, I am building cars. Building cars. So what's your part of the line? What are you doing? Um, I'm connecting electrical cables. Connecting electrical cables. How do they do that in a car? Is it Are they like but connectors are they molex or do you have to do soldering or no they're literally they're called couplers they're these little box looking kind of like only can go in one way yeah they've got like eight cables going into them only well there's one cable going into like each set of couplers mm -hmm. so you've got 
you're, they call it a female and a male coupler for mm -hmm. obvious reasons. Yep. So you take your one part, stick it into the other one, and it's supposed this to... This is getting kind of graphic, Kel. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and, you, and it runs the electrical current through it, and you just have to do a lot of bolts and... Cool. So this is stuff. the electrical system, the computers, and Not sound really. system? Do you do no. the sound stuff? No. That's, I'm, it's that's just a bunch like of, like... I guess there's a, there are a lot of like airbag couplers, okay. making sure like all the connections for that kind of go through. How much is left until the car is ordered? Like I like I thought about stereos, but then I thought no because you've got so many different stereo options. Like yeah, I might want it's... Bluetooth, or I might want an iPod connector, or yeah, we're more towards the end. Of the line? Um, like, the so the line. car is almost complete? Almost. There's still, like, the middle console has to be put mm -hmm. in, uh, and all the seats have to be put in, mm -hmm. um, and just a lot of, like, the finishing kind of touches. Cool. So I don't know how much they put in before we get there, but right, <laughs> it's it's pretty good. And then a I, have a, I have to do some stuff with on, on the underside of the body, too. Cool. So you've been there on the line. For almost... Two and a half months now. And I know you well enough that you have probably found some Pokemon on the line. Is this true? No, because we're not allowed to use our phones on You're the line. You're not Oh, good going, Honda. Because it could... They know. They don't want Pokemon dancing around their cars. <laughs> and it's not just that. It's like if you, you, people could take pictures and send it to their competitors. Sure. Yeah. So it's all privacy issues. Yeah, and, and that's why we're keeping this purposely vague. Yes. Can't get Kelsey in trouble. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Good on you. And it's it's nice that you've got something that's you get to I'm learn. Tired something. all so the time. I guess so. It's, It'd be so much fun to learn, yeah. though. It's. I love learning new things, and that's something I've never got into as cars. Neither did I until I started at my job. Sure. I was so like, nope, Dad, you do it. Good experience for you, though. Like, are you? Yeah. It's, I mean, like it's not the stuff that i would have liked to learn like changing oil and t changing my tires but okay that's the that's the real world stuff yeah like you're building cars I'm it's a little it. different than fixing them yeah. or servicing them yeah. yeah but it gets you it gets your hands dirty and you get to learn so that you're not af is it, oh, like afraid of getting under the hood yeah because i'm freaked out about it <laughs> <laughs> i've yeah. never changed the oil in my life i always take it to the shop i watch the sticker and that's how i know so. Well, if you never need issues, I'm sure my dad would be well, lovely to help. He's fixing Thank you for volunteering your dad. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. He actually had to fix engine bits on my car. <laughs> like. The lady who's building your cars, folks, just called them <laughs> engine bits. <laughs> well, I had, a, I had a spark plug go out. The engine bits. There's something wrong with the engine bits and the <laughs> exhaust fanny. <laughs> That's all the time that we have. Yes. Have a marvelous week. Kelsey, thanks for being here. Thanks no for sharing. Problem. And I hope you have a great week. We'll see you next Tuesday. Bye. Good night. <laughs>